I had no idea who these people were. I had no idea if they were a starving artist or a Wall Street bro- uh, banker. Like really, when you when you strip everything away, <laughs> you know, it, you're you just are. And what it for me on a very personal level it became this very beautiful thing of connecting with people without any preconceptions or notions, other than obviously my own you know, inner dialogue about body types and that sort of thing. Besides that, I didn't really have any other way to evaluate them, you know, because I didn't know anything about them. All I saw was this person before me who was, you know, trying to make a sincere effort to do this quote-unquote practice. Namaste. You're listening to the Savannah Podcast. Join us on an exploration of Eastern spirituality, yoga philosophy, and conscious living for the new age. This podcast is a production of SavannahSpirit.com, the best place to shop for unique clothing, spiritual handcrafted jewelry, healing gemstones, and fair trade gifts from the Far East. Now, here's your host, Brett Larkin. Hello, Savannah family. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for being here. I am excited about today's episode because it's a topic I've always wanted to learn more about. Today, we're talking about naked yoga. And I just want you to set aside whatever you think naked yoga is about because you're going to learn so much if you listen to this week's episodes with me. We are interviewing Yogi Aaron. He is the author of an autobiography of a naked yogi and he's the co-owner of Blue Osa Yoga Retreat and Spa in Costa Rica. He's going to tell us about the retreat center and also about his incredible personal journey as he developed nude yoga in New York in the early 2000s. Before we dive into the episode, I just want to remind you to support the show, leave a rating or review here on iTunes. Even if iTunes isn't how you normally listen to the show, this really helps get the show in front of more people looking to transform their life through yoga and meditation. Your review really really does make a difference. The other way you can support the podcast is by making a purchase at savannaspirit.com. This week, I'm featuring their gorgeous Himalayan salt lamps. They're not only a gorgeous glowing home decor feature, but they also emit beneficial healing ions into the air that protect you from EMFs. You can search salt lamps on savannaspirit.com to learn more. And remember, you can use that discount code podcast30 for 30% off anything your heart desires at savannahspirit.com. All right, so today we're going to learn about the world of nude yoga, a practice that is much deeper than you may think. We're going to learn from Aaron's fascinating personal journey as he developed and grew this practice from a small experimental class, he's going to tell us about that very first class, to a large nude yoga studio offering 15 plus classes a week. Whether you think you might ever want to take your clothes off in yoga or or not, this podcast is full of gems that's going to help you break through any blocks or preconceived notions about yourself. We talk about stripping away clothing as a way to access the deepest layers of ourselves. We discuss the potency of emotional release in yoga and in being comfortable and naked in our own bodies. There is so many gems in this week's episodes. So let's dive in and get started. I can't wait to share this conversation with Aaron. Aaron, thank you so much for being with us and coming on the show all the way from Costa Rica. All the way from beautiful, sunny paradise of Costa Rica on the beach, (laughs) recording live. (laughs) I'm so glad to have you. And I know you didn't always live in Costa Rica. You used to be in New York, correct? Yes, I lived in New York for 10 years. And I'm so excited to have you on the show because as I think I mentioned before I hit the record button, I have always been fascinated by this idea of practicing yoga with no clothes. Now, I'm going to be very upfront. I'm going to tell you this is not something I've tried, but I'm so curious about it. And I think it's something that people have... Uh, misconceptions about, right? They they don't really get it or know what it's about. Maybe they think it's something sexual. And as I told you, I had a student come into one of my classes a couple years ago and we started chatting after class and he let me know he was a yoga instructor and he was from the United Kingdom. And I asked him, oh, what kind of yoga do you teach? And of course I was expecting him to say, you know, Ashtanga or Iyengar. So, you know, something like that. And he goes, I teach naked yoga. And I was a little taken aback and I was like, oh, what's that like? I don't know anything about that. And of course I had all 
my preconceived notions about what it was about. And he started telling me about it and my mind was blown just about how it was so much deeper and how he said, you know, he was telling me practicing with no clothes, like you are able to get into asanas that you can't get into. It just really blew my mind. And ever since that conversation, I was like, I'm desperate to talk to someone who knows more about this. And I know you were a leader in de- kind of developing the style of yoga. So can you tell us about all of that? <laughs> like how, how you came to start doing it in the first place or invent it, or I don't know what the right term is. So you, you, there's no, there's no foreplay here. We're just jumping right in. We're jumping right in. Right? <laughs> I love it. So, I mean, a little tongue in cheek aside, when I was, um, so my background is in Ashtanga, power yoga. My, one of my first teachers is, or was Brian Kest. And so when I used to teach, as you can imagine, it was a co-ed class and we used to get course very sweaty. And so oftentimes we used to joke like, oh, we should, you know, take off our clothes. And (laughs) I think in a kind of a weird way, that was where, well, there was kind of two places where the idea started to percolate. But that was when I started thinking, wow, like, what would it be like to do that? And how would that change the dynamic of this practice? So that was stemming very much from just a place physically where could we get into the asanas better? Or could we be more comfortable without clothes? Because you were really hot and sweaty. Yeah. And, and for me, honestly, for me, yoga has always been a practice of authenticity, of being real, of getting down and stripping away layers. I mean, mm-hmm. even when I first started and didn't know anything, although I thought I knew everything. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, I, it was always a thing for me, it was always a a way to like, who is Aaron? So when I moved to New York and I was trying to, I was finding my way and I really, really wanted to teach gay men. And, um, I sort of landed in Chelsea in New York, um, which in 2000 was sort of gay Mecca of New York, that in the village. And, um, I was asking the question, like, if I really want to teach gay men, then what is a way to reach out to them? And for gay men, I would say that nudity is less of an issue than for other people. And that's just a broad generalization. I realize that. But so I was the idea came to me like, okay, well, what about naked yoga? Because there's so many, you know, great gyms in the area. And a lot of them are offering like kind of hip yoga classes. What's something that no one else is doing. And I thought it would sort of be kind of like a little bit of a gag, not a gag gag, but a gimmick, if you will. And it would also satisfy my own curiosity because I'm a kind of a person, I like to try everything at least twice. (laughs) And, and, And sort of going back to that initial idea, it was like, what would it be like to do this practice naked? It would, you know, kind of satisfy that curiosity. And it would be fulfilling, you know, a sort of a dream of teaching gay men. And um, it seemed like a way to outreach to the to the population that you really wanted to serve. Yes. Yes. And um, and so that was actually when I came up with the idea. I remember the exact moment I was crossing Sixth Avenue on the corner of 23rd Street and Avenue of the Americas. And I was literally literally I walked halfway across the street because I had already been thinking about it. Then the idea came to my head. It's like hot nude yoga. <laughs> and um, as one um, documentary person put it, you know, it's everything it says, but nothing like it sounds. <laughs> so at this point, this this was a totally new concept, right? Pretty much. Totally new concept. I mean, to be fair, there was, I had found out either just before my first class or after my first class that there was another naked yoga group in New York. It was called Midnight Yoga for Men. And it was this gentleman who was from the Shivananda lineage. Mm -hmm. And he used to hold his classes at 1030. I think it was once or twice a week. And they would be every, you know, those specific nights at 1030, he would set up candles and he, he was very, from what I heard, he's, he was very strict in that practice. And so he had very focused practice whereby with me, 
what I was starting to think about was, okay, well, how can this practice be different? How can this practice, so if nakedness is something that gets people in the door and is something that is attracting people, you know, what what are we going to do that's going to be something more? And the answer that came to me, well, the broad answer came to me was Tantra. Within that scope of Tantra, what really emerged was community and um, this idea of creating Sangha. And so what kind of started to, well, I'm going to back up a second. So after the first class, I realized, like, I think this is going to last longer than I thought. Because I was only thinking, you know, I'd do this for a couple of months and then move on. And, and I want to back you up even further, if you don't mind. So you were already teaching clothed yoga at this time, right? You were already a teacher. Okay. And, and so you were just looking for a way to, you know, really connect with the people you wanted to connect with and, you know, find a good marketing hook or, you know, edge to, to your classes, which makes total sense. Now I want to ask you, cause you know, as a teacher myself, I love developing sequences and experimenting with things. So did you just like show up and was like, we're just going to practice naked or did you get naked yourself in your house and start seeing what the practice felt without clothes on first, kind of doing some investigative work personally. Like how did you do, I mean, how did the first class develop or was it really just like, we're all, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did this happen? So first of all, one of my favorite quotes is if you don't know how to swim, just jump into the deep end of the pool. And if if you're uncomfortable, the ladder is always there. So (laughs) I I just jump into the deep end of the pool. What so the so part of the way that I started to create community, and I kind of did it unconsciously, consciously and unconsciously, um, and intuitively. Intuitively is probably a better word. Is that I started doing partner yoga, and so I would do the class was two hours, so it was from seven thirty to nine thirty, and we would do the first half of the class closed. I uh, sorry, the first half of the class was like you know, a vinyasa sequence. And then the second half of the class was partner yoga. And (laughs) so what I did to start to prepare was actually I had met a dancer and he was taking my yoga classes at one of the dance centers that I was teaching. We became friends. And I asked him one day, I said, do you mind like starting to practice some of this, you know, some of these partner yoga uh, postures together to help me prepare for my class? I have to tell you something. We were very lucky. We actually went to one of the gyms that I was teaching at. And when the gym wasn't being used for yoga classes or what have you, we started doing this. It was one of the most, it was the, it was the doorway opening to one of the most powerful experiences I have ever had in my life until that point in yoga, because what started to emerge and remember we were clothed, we weren't naked, but we were doing these different postures and, um, what started to emerge is like we got really deep into them. We were breathing together. Our breathing started synchronizing, started connecting at a very deep, um, this will probably like make some of your listeners' eyeballs pop out, but at a very deep sensual level, it was not sexual. And I think a lot of people misinterpret those two meanings because we are very sensual and sexual beings, but the two things are very different. And sensuality starts to open up our senses to experiencing something much more. We allow it to something much more than just what is, you know, in front of us at that moment. And we, um, and I, I, I remember like going, people start talking about going deep into their practice. What does that really mean? I started going deep within myself, like in a way that I had never gone before. And Aaron, I'm guessing that you said this was around 2000s, right? So was acro yoga and partner yoga like even really a thing yet? Or were you guys kind of early experimenters of that as well? Dias mio. So th- no, this was like one of the very first books ever written. I don't even think it's in print anymore. It was written by a guy named Kane Carroll. And I don't remember his friend's name. Um, it was two people that writ- wrote this book. And I believe that the title of it was Partner Yoga. It was one of the only books ever written at that moment. And then a couple of years later, like there was a flood of other books. It was one of the best books I've ever seen on partner yoga, though. The stuff that they have in there was so great. So you guys were just working off this book, clothed, but having some really deep experiences together as your breath harmonized and, and you went deeper into the partner work. 
Yeah. And, and what I started to realize is that this was a powerful way to connect. And you hear this a lot now when people are promoting partner yoga, there's this, you know, the acro yoga group and all about community. It's all about like, you know, being together and, and breathing together. The way that we were doing it, though, was like really taking our time, really just allowing ourselves to melt into certain postures. Some of the postures were very intimate, and then some of them were, you know, not so intimate. But what I started to feel was this kinetic force, you know, that was between us, and it's starting to harmonize. And it's, unless you've experienced that, you know, it's really hard to explain it because it sounds so freaking woo woo. <laughs> But it was, it, 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 for me, this was the door opening for the possibilities of what, you know, the tantricas were trying to teach us. So how does this partner work you're doing with him then evolve into the jumping off the deep end of hosting your first naked yoga class? So just to be clear, um, I had, uh, I was so lucky. I mean, the goddess is always guiding us in some way or opening up doorways. So the doorway that opened up for me was I found this studio space. Um, it was like on 28th Street and Fifth Avenue, somewhere between Fifth and Broadway. And um, this uh, studio space was completely quiet at night. So by daytime in the week, it was an actor studio. <laughs> And then in the day, in the weekends, there was like nobody there, but they rented it out. So for a very small fee, I managed to secure the space. And the only way to get up there was through a locked elevator. So I had to unlock the elevator. People had to come up. So it was a very private space. I had um, a friend check in people, you know, on the street level, and then they would just take the elevator up. And so what we did was we had people come into the room naked. So they were already naked when they came in the room. And so they left their clothes outside. And I remember my very first class, I was so petrified and so nervous. <laughs> I laid down in Shavasana for like 20 minutes before the class started. And intuitively, I just knew, you know, it was time to start. And so I immediately, I sat up, turned around, and I saw 18 naked bodies before me. And I said, namaste, welcome. <laughs> and then started to tea. <laughs> I was so petrified. I can't even tell you. I can only imagine because I mean, I, I, similar to you, I have teacher trainings and, you know, everyone's always so afraid to teach and use their voice. And then it's like, okay, now do that naked. I mean, it sounds like something from a dream or something that you'd wake up. Panic. Well, isn't that it? Most people's nightmare to wake up from something and then, and then you're naked. Yes. You're naked in front of a group of people that literally happened to me. So, so people weren't taking their clothes off in the elevator though. There was like a space before they came in the room where they'd take off their clothes. Cause I think this this is interesting. It's like the ritual behind something like this too. So you come into the room naked, they brought their own mat or there were, you know, mats there. So it's just you and the mat. Um, would people have towels and things that they brought to wipe their hands or? They had to bring everything. I mean, there was a list. I, I actually had a list of instructions for people to do before they came, um, you know, make sure that you shower <laughs> any beans, you know, two hours beforehand. Don't eat anything two hours beforehand. Um, make sure that you bring water, um, you know, these sort of things. The other thing too is like if people didn't make it, like there was a five minute window for, so if the class started at 7.30, they had to be there at 7.25 or the door was locked, it could not get up at all. So that was a great tapas because I always go to a lot of yoga classes where people walk in like here, it was like people couldn't get in unless they showed up on time. And that, I think, really started to engender kind of a, a seriousness about this. Tell me about the atmosphere, because I think when I visualize naked yoga in my head, not knowing anything about it, I just thought of like sweaty bodies and lots of nudity and lights and sweat. And when I talked to this other uh, person who came to my class who taught naked yoga, he was saying that he keeps the lights very, very uh, dim. So it's almost dark, um, which I found fascinating. So is that sort of the ambiance you were creating as well? For me, as a person, ambiance is very important. The very first space that we went into, I, 
you know, the lighting was kind of like all or nothing. So I think that there was maybe a couple of lights that we could have on that were very low. We were, you know, New York was our skyline. So a lot of like the light from the city came into the space and it created, it did definitely create a mood atmosphere. As I moved along in sort of my, this path, we started doing daytime classes. So Obviously, the mood lighting changed and became, you know, something different. In the beginning, yeah, I think mood mood lighting was important, but it's also important. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you're doing naked yoga. Of course, you're going to want to, you think that people are looking around, but actually it kind of got people, what I noticed, and I'm not sure... What I noticed is that it made people focus a lot more deeply. People were able to go much more deeper inward, much more deeply inward than they normally would have. I know. And I'd love for you to talk to us now more about the differences between, you know, a traditional yoga class that we're all familiar with and one in which the clothes are off. Because some things I remember this this friend of mine saying was just that it it does, like it, it brings you, your sight, your senses are heightened in a way. You're more in your body in, in some kind of way because you 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 don't have any clothes on um, and that you'd think it would be this thing, yeah, where like you're checking everyone out, but it actually isn't like that at all. It almost becomes, as you said, like the, the, the concentration is amplified, like just all these things that you wouldn't think would be the effect. Can you talk us through, like what are the differences that you saw when people were practicing with and without clothes on? Well, I mean, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. So, I mean, I'm talking from the point of view of someone who's gay, who is was teaching basically gay men. I mean, we did have some straight men come, bisexual men that came, but I never really taught co-ed classes. I think I only ever taught one in my life, I think, maybe two, but I never really taught co-ed classes. So that's, I want to be right up front about that. And I think that there's a huge difference in teaching just men. Um, I think that there's a sense of tribalism that comes out. Um, Men have very different energy in yoga classes than women do. So there's, there's, there's that dynamic. So I just want to be clear, like I'm speaking from this point of view. The second thing, and this is kind of an interesting discussion because you do hear a lot of people make statements, oh, well, yoga, naked yoga is better because of blah, blah, blah. I would say that what made the classes special was the deep commitment to bringing community into the classes. And community can show up in a lot of different ways. Sometimes we would huddle together and do some chanting. I love to chant. Oh my God. Um, chanting with 40 naked men is a beyond experience. <laughs> um, so that's a, that's one way to create community. Another way is um, do partner yoga. So that's why I brought the whole partnering aspect into it. Another way is like, you know, say for example, you're doing a class where you're doing a lot of alignment stuff and you're getting people to kind of adjust each other. And when you're naked and you're doing like alignment stuff, it's very interesting because you can really get into some detailed stuff. So I, you know, there was always a sense and it was one of the things in, in my hot new yoga studio, while I didn't really have a format set for teachers, but doing something that was bringing community into the class was really important. And I had, you know, close to the end when I was not, at my studio all the time, I was busy traveling. I actually went and took um, one of my teacher's uh, classes or one of the teachers that was teaching at the studio. And I didn't really know him. He was brought in by one of the other teachers. And, and it was interesting taking his class because he did not do anything that was partner related, that was like huddling together, or that was, you know, connecting people. So what I noticed was that this class was it was just a regular yoga class. There was nothing special about it. There was nothing to draw my attention to. It was nice to be in this group of people that were sort of like-minded, that were on the same path, that were doing yoga together, that were, you know, feeling the sense of freedom. That was all great. But what I noticed over time that was made it extra special or extra dynamic or extra, um, that really helped to guide the practice in a bigger uh, direction was this aspect of bringing community into the class. I think there's something also potentially very healing about, and I mean, I don't know if you had this sense, but I just imagine 
for me, doing something like this, you'd have to be really comfortable in your own skin, <laughs> right? I mean, so many of us are, you know, think of us, ourselves as advanced yoga practitioners, whatever that means, right? And, and we can do all these fancy poses, but, you know, ask me to strip all my clothes off and just practice even alone in my home naked. And that might feel uncomfortable for, I think, a lot of people. Do you think, I mean, so many of us just have shame around nudity and shame around our physical bodies. Can you speak to any experience you have with that at all? So feel free to redirect me because you just said a loaded statement and there's a lot of things to cover. One, I do think that a lot of people call themselves on a yogic path and very few of us are really ready to tread into the darkness of our souls. And um, I, you know, that's what I really try to bring out in my classes. That's what I try to bring out as a teacher in different ways. Obviously, as I'm not teaching naked yoga, I do it in different ways. But I do think that a lot of us, there's a, there's a very fine line. Our yoga practice serving us in a way that helps us strip away, that we hold on to, that, we, that, that cloak us in this kind of ego, this idea of who we think we are. And I think that from, from what I've seen, a lot of people came to hot new yoga, not because they were comfortable in their skin, but because they were uncomfortable and they wanted to get comfortable. Um, that was the most interesting thing. I would, I would sincerely say 50 to 70% of the people that came to hot new yoga were people that were not comfortable in their skin. And what, what happened was because the environment we provided was pretty um, neutral. And we didn't really, you know, we had all kinds of people of all ages, of all body types. We had, you know, people from, you know, 20 years old all the way up to um, 70 years old. Um, we had people of all ethnicities come to the classes. And what I quickly realized within like a year of doing this was I had no idea who these people were. I had no idea if they were a starving artist or a Wall Street bro uh, banker. Like really, when you when you strip everything away, <laughs> you know, it you're you just are. And what it for me on a very personal level it became this very beautiful thing of connecting with people without any preconceptions or notions, other than obviously my own you know, inner dialogue about body types and that sort of thing. Besides that, I didn't really have any other way to evaluate them, you know, because I didn't know anything about them. All I saw was this person before me who was, you know, trying to make a sincere effort to do this quote unquote practice. It's so interesting what you're saying, because it's like anything we put on our skin or our bodies is in some way defining our identity, right? You know, like the type of shirt I wear, or someone's wearing a bandana in their hair or not. I mean, it's like all these little things serve to build you don't realize like how much all those little things are like informing your identity about yourself, like your choice of why you wear all these different things and, and, and the messages they're sending out. And it's like, especially if everyone left their clothing at the door before they even came into the class, like I really get what you're saying. It's like, you had no idea who these people were, like from what walks of life or, or you, you know, anything like that. It was just everything being stripped away like that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, what really came out of it was this amazing community that spread around the world um, in, a, in, a, in an amazing way. People found out about what I was doing. Um, I actually made a series of DVDs. Um, and one of the reasons for that was hoping that people would start their own sort of naked yoga group in their living rooms and invite friends over and, you know, just to share a practice. And, um, and then what ended up happening was a lot of people actually started their own sort of quote unquote naked yoga studios or naked yoga group in their own city. And this community of people that at least what I was seeing in New York and on my yoga retreats was a group of people that were really committed to a path that was set on unveiling the authentic self and really supporting um, and cherishing the that as it started to emerge um, within each other. And uh, it, nothing spoke more clearly than when we started doing our Memorial Weekend retreats and we would have anywhere from 40 six men to the largest one I ever had was 80 men, uh, come and, you know, it was a week, it was like weekend, weekend 
gay naked yoga camp <laughs> in upstate New York. And these guys would show up and we would do, you know, a weekend of full yoga as well as um, that would also include like a talent show, for example. And um, it was really amazing to see like how these personalities um, started to shine and people started to emerge out of, you know, a cocoon that they were living in. Aaron, thank you so much for all you've shared so far. Savannah family, we are going to continue this conversation with Aaron in Thursday's episode. You do not want to miss it, especially if you've been enjoying uh, the, the story and all the gold nuggets of wisdom that Aaron has to share with us that you've learned so far. Make sure to tune into Thursday's episode where we continue this conversation. We'll talk about why simply listening to another person's breath can really change our lives. Aaron has so many more nuggets of wisdom to share. So tune in to Thursday's episode to hear the rest of Aaron's amazing journey. I'm wishing you a beautiful day. From my heart to yours, namaste. You've been listening to the Savannah Podcast. To find out more about Savannah, go to savannahspirit.com or follow Savannah on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash savannahspirit. For daily inspiration, check out our blog at savannaheast.com. Be sure to join us next week for a new episode. And thank you for listening to the Savannah Podcast.